Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. The movie begins at a train station. After patrolling the station, Joe, the train guard, receives a rejection letter. Annoyed, he crumples the paper and throws it in his locker. Suddenly, the train supervisor enters the scene and says that one of the guards is sick and will not be able to perform his duty that night. Joe complains about the situation, arguing that he is tired and has just finished his shift. While the supervisor encourages him to do the job, he sees Ellen in the background. Joe thinks that the consolation of doing the job is being able to spend more time with his unrequited love, Ellen. Quickly, Joe makes the decision and commits to the overnight duty. Upon boarding the train, Joe greets all passengers and starts checking tickets. He asks a blonde lady for her ticket, but she can't find it. Although initially annoyed, she quickly takes her money and pays. As he continues the inspection, Joe is happy to see his crush, and possibly wants to impress her on the train. To start a conversation, Joe approaches her and initiates dialogue. Suddenly, Joe asks Ellen if she wants to have a drink after the shift. Fearing his advance, Ellen excuses herself, saying that she doesn't think any bars will be open after the shift. To hide his broken heart, Joe continues his job to end the awkward situation. The scene shows an image of the full moon as the train heads to its destination. Suddenly, a loud noise travels throughout the train. To find out the cause, Joe carefully walks towards his workmates to ask what happened. As he tries to open the door, the radio rings, and the driver says they hit something on the road and advises passengers to remain calm and in their seats. The driver leaves the train to find what hit them. As he opens the door, Joe sees that Ellen's trolley is all messed up. Trying to help, he tries to lift the trolley, but can't. Ellen advises Joe to check on the other passengers to keep them calm. Meanwhile, the passengers panic as Joe tries to calm them down. Joe reassures everyone that everything will be all right. Fortunately, after inspection, the driver discovers that they hit a wild deer, now stuck to the wheels. The driver tries his best to remove the deer from the wheels, but doesn't find luck because it is too heavy. Suddenly, he hears a sound from behind. An unknown, hairy creature jumps out of the bushes and starts attacking him. Meanwhile, Joe sees that the annoying female passenger is smoking a cigarette. Joe approaches her and says smoking is not allowed inside the train. While the annoying girl doesn't care, he forcibly takes her cigarette to stop her. At this point, Joe and Ellen think the driver is taking too long and taking too long inspecting. To check if he's okay, Joe takes his flashlight and shouts the driver's name in hopes of reaching him. With no response, Joe looks outside for any signs of the driver. Still finding nothing, Joe contacts the authorities for help. However, the authorities say it will take them four hours to get to them, because of the heavy storm. Knowing the information, Joe informs the passengers about their situation. The passengers are distressed and think it's ridiculous to wait four hours. The passengers ask Joe if the driver could fix the problem. Joe confides that the driver is missing and they can't track any sign of him. The scary information makes the passengers even crazier. While everyone argues, a selfish middle-aged man, nicknamed Mr. Selfish, appears to break the ice. He suggests everyone go out and walk to the next station. Most of the passengers agree and start preparing for the walk. Mr. Selfish tries to open the outside door, but can't because he doesn't have the keys. However, Joe, doing his job as a guard, reiterates the train's safety protocol. Joe says all passengers should stay on the train and wait for assistance in case something bad happens. Hesitant at first, Joe takes the keys to open the door for everyone to leave. All passengers get off the train, planning to walk to the next station. Joe advises the group to stick together, as he leads them to the next station. As they walk through the forest, they keep hearing sounds in nearby bushes. Joe and Ellen volunteer to go into the forest to check the cause of the noise. While Joe can't believe what he's witnessing, he sees the eviscerated body of the driver lying on the ground. Fearing for their lives, they start running for safety. While running towards the train, a loud howl, seemingly from a werewolf, is heard. The group reaches the train door, terrified by the sound and desperate to get inside. However, they don't know which deadly creature is lurking in the forest, watching them closely. 
As the elderly woman tries to board the train as quickly as possible, the werewolf tracks her dying hormones and bites her leg. Fortunately, Joe and the passengers help her onto the train. However, the elderly woman's leg is already injured and bleeding heavily. While the annoying girl cries, the other passengers lift the elderly woman to administer first aid. The group decides to be as quiet as possible so that the werewolf will not hear them. After hearing the werewolf's claws scratching the train, Joe concludes that the monster is gone, as the scary sound disappears. After this moment of terror, the group breathes a sigh of relief. The passengers think that the elderly woman's situation is critical and she must be taken to the hospital as soon as possible. Ellen advises Joe to call the authorities for immediate help. However, when Joe tries to contact the authorities, he fails, thinking they have no signal. Suddenly, a technical passenger appears and talks about the train's engine. The technician says he knows about engines and thinks a fuel leak is the train's problem. He theorizes that the line must have broken when the train crashed earlier. The technician concludes that they cannot move if the problem is not fixed. Knowing this, Joe explains the terrible situation to the passengers. The elderly woman describes the creature as not just an animal, but a man dressed in a wolf's skin, representing a werewolf. Suddenly, everyone hears a noise on the other side of the train. Joe and the others brace themselves to approach it. As they walk carefully, they plan to attack the monster as soon as it breaks the door. Surprisingly, as the door breaks, the fat passenger comes out of it. They help Mr. Fat and explain everything to him. The elderly woman starts to develop a fever due to her severe injury. Meanwhile, the blonde passenger approaches the annoying girl to console her. The annoying girl appreciates the gesture and talks about her mother. While the two build rapport, a loud noise is heard at one of the doors, signaling the beast is back. Suddenly, the annoying girl's phone receives a signal and a call. She answers it and hears her mother. As they try to talk about their situation to the mother, the werewolf arrives and breaks one of the windows. Then the creature pulls the annoying girl's leg, dragging her outside. While they try to help the poor girl, they hear the werewolf smalling from above, and blood starts spilling onto the nearby windows. The passengers scream in horror, and to save themselves, they move to the other side of the train to avoid the werewolf. As the passengers panic and argue, the old man advises that they should plan a defense to protect themselves even more. Using the train's tools, the passengers collectively make an effort to create a barricade, blocking every entry point of the train. As the night deepens, the group conserves energy for any tragedies that may come. Meanwhile, Mr. Selfish approaches Joe to console him, saying that if the werewolf comes back, they need to be prepared if they still want to live life to the fullest. He suggests that if the werewolf attacks again, they could save themselves by escaping outside, leaving the rest behind. Mr. Selfish describes this as survival of the fittest. Suddenly, the elderly woman's health worsens, and she vomits a lot of blood. Joe realizes that one of the group members is missing, specifically Mr. Fat. Joe goes to check on him. He dares Mr. Fat to leave the bathroom as soon as possible. However, Mr. Fat is stuck, like a greasy sandwich, as the door cannot open. Suddenly, the werewolf attacks from above and ends Mr. Fat's greasy life. While the werewolf is preoccupied with Joe and Mr. Fat, Mr. Selfish plans to leave the train. Trying to save himself, Joe tries to get back to the barricaded carriage, but it's already locked. Fortunately, Joe manages to return to the barricaded carriage with the help of the passengers. To prevent the werewolf from getting to them, they barricade the door with all their strength. However, the werewolf simply overpowers them. Seeing the creature up close, Ellen freezes, and Joe saves her from imminent death. The ferocious and horrendous werewolf approaches to attack Joe. To save her friend, Ellen takes a knife and stabs the werewolf in the stomach. The werewolf hits Ellen, making her fly and fall to the ground. Joe quickly grabs an iron bar and attacks the beast, followed by Mr. Selfish striking the monster from behind, causing it to fall. As they bring down the werewolf, the passengers gather all their weapons and use them to hit the werewolf, severely injuring the creature. However, the werewolf gets up and starts choking the technician. To finish off the werewolf, the Indian man grabs his axe and hits the werewolf with all his might. Upon inspecting the body, the Indian man concludes that it indeed is a werewolf, a hybrid between a man and a wolf. 
Suddenly, Mr. Selfish remembers that every person bitten by a werewolf will become infected and transform into a werewolf too. With this information, all passengers focus on the elderly woman with a wolf bite. The old man tells a story about a similar tragedy in the forest long ago, implying that werewolf attacks in their area have been happening since ancient times. Suddenly, the werewolf rises from the dead and howls. Joe grabs the fire extinguisher and uses it as a weapon to finish off and destroy the werewolf's face. In the next scene, a group of werewolves is seen lurking in the forest, planning their attack. This reveals that the last howl of the werewolf signals other werewolves to avenge him. Suddenly, they see the old lady's body starting to transform. Mr. Selfish concludes that the old lady is turning into a werewolf. Quickly, he grabs a weapon, trying to kill the old lady before she fully transforms. However, the old man dislikes the idea of killing his infected wife. As Mr. Selfish is about to kill the old lady, other passengers stop him. He then tries to force himself toward the old lady. Hitting everything in his way, Mr. Selfish chokes the old lady to death. However, Joe suddenly arrives at the scene and knocks Mr. Selfish unconscious. To prevent possible rampages, Joe challenges the passengers to tie up Mr. Selfish and the old lady. To plan for escape, the technician will try to fix the train with his knowledge of engines. The technician instructs the group on what he will try to get the train moving and how the rest of the passengers can help him. The technician now leaves the train with the Indian man, attempting to fix the fuel lines. Luckily, he successfully finds the leak, giving the group a good chance of repairing the train. Suddenly, the Indian man hears a sound in the forest. He bravely goes into the forest with his flashlight to check what it is. He hears a woman's voice and follows it. Pointing the flashlight to the top of the tree, he sees the poor annoying girl being eaten alive by a werewolf. The pack of werewolves now starts chasing the Indian man. The pack corners him, and they all devour him alive. Horror after horror, the old lady now begins to transform into a werewolf. Mr. Selfish challenges the blonde passenger to free him so he can kill the old lady before she transforms. With a glimmer of light, the technician successfully repairs the train's engine. However, the pack of werewolves is now surrounding the place. While outside, he sees the werewolves, but fortunately, they go in another direction. Meanwhile, the old lady behaves differently and now fully transforms into a werewolf. With her strength, she breaks free from the ropes. Suddenly, a werewolf appears in the window and pulls the blonde passenger from behind with the help of Mr. Selfish. As the train moves, the blonde passenger is now stuck in the forest, awaiting her imminent death. The old lady werewolf no longer recognizes her husband. She bites his neck, causing blood to spurt in all directions. She then attacks Mr. Selfish. Meanwhile, the train suddenly stops, sabotaging their only hope. Joe and Ellen now run for their lives as the pack of werewolves lurks in the forests. Joe saves Mr. Selfish when he stabs the old lady werewolf with a giant spear in her back. Angry, Joe tries to attack Mr. Selfish, but Ellen stops him. Suddenly, the pack of werewolves enters the train. To protect themselves, Joe makes a barricade so that the werewolves cannot enter. Joe plans to get outside and escape. Mr. Selfish realizes he would have a better chance of escaping if one person stays behind on the train as bait. Mr. Selfish then uses his weapon to attack Joe, hoping to knock him out. However, Joe fights back and wrestles with him. To save Joe, Ellen grabs a sharp object and uses it to force Mr. Selfish to let go. Ellen then cuts a part of Mr. Selfish's face to stop him. Mr. Selfish takes advantage of the distraction and traps Joe and Ellen on the train while he escapes outside. Three werewolves are now approaching Joe and Ellen. Fortunately, the technician arrives to save everyone. The technician brings a Molotov cocktail and throws it at one of the werewolves, setting it on fire. As he keeps the beasts at bay, Ellen forces the door open for them to escape. She and Joe jump off the train, but unfortunately, the technician is grabbed by the werewolf and killed. They then run for their lives through the forest to escape from the beasts that are pursuing them. Suddenly, Joe decides to stay behind and distract the werewolves. Before facing the beasts, he kisses his crush one last time. Crying, Ellen runs away as fast as she can. Although Joe bravely fights, he is simply overpowered by the three werewolves. 
He grabs a sharp object to fight back and stabs the werewolf in the stomach. However, Joe is defeated when the werewolf bites his neck. The scene quickly shifts to the train station, with Ellen all bloody but safe. On the other hand, Mr. Selfish is lost in the woods. We finish by seeing him encountering the newly transformed werewolf, Joe. While the others just watch him being finished off.